This is a swing fly that I developed probably about 10 years ago. I started playing around a lot with these rubber silly legs. Um, there's a guy out west that I actually guided with in Alaska at Katmai Lodge for a number of years called Scott Howell, who's a great spay guy on the west coast in British Columbia. And he developed an intruder type pattern, which is really sparse on the rubber legs, but it's more for fishing in like real low clear water. So it doesn't have a lot of movement, just enough, you know, to get a fish's attention. This I came up with, it's a little more profile and a little brighter in color. And it, if you notice, it's the blue and black, which you can't really go wrong for steelhead. So this is a shank style fly. And I'm tying this on a 35 or 40 millimeter shank. So it's gonna have basically a trailer hook off the back of it. Now with these shanks, the biggest key, you can see how they're kind of separated. You wanna be able to tie this down so it's nice and tight. Cause you don't want that to spring or break your thread in the process of tying. So I'll just make a few wraps just to get that cinched down pretty good. And then to attach the trailer hook, there's a lot of stuff on the market these days that you can use. Some guys use, um, Sanyo makes wire that you can get at a fly shop, which works great too. Um, this is probably the easiest method. This is just braided line. So you can see it like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this and to tie this on, I don't want it to be super, super long like I was just talking about. So I don't want it like way out here. So here's my hook hanging. I want to make it a little stiffer. So what I do is I just match it up basically with the length of my shank like so. And then I'll bring it back and then tie it. So this fly I have, you want the hook riding upside down. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch this and push it through the eye. And then I'm just gonna take this loop and separate it out and then run it back over. You'll have a tendency to poke yourself. Just like that, see? The steps that I'm taking to make this it's no different than like if you wanted to tie a steelhead intruder fly, this is gonna be kind of the same principle, but just getting the movement out of the material. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a butt section on this. So I'm gonna start giving this fly some shoulders, I guess is what I would call it. Just so we're gonna get that movement out of the rubber legs. So I'm gonna take this, the steely blue ice dub, and I'm almost gonna make like a little tail just fairly short though. I don't want it way up here where the hook's gonna get in the way. Just like that, pretty simple. And then I'm just gonna take this and fold it back over, kind of spread it out on my fingers a little bit. and then just cut some of the excess off, or you can, a lot of the stuff, you can even pull it. Just like that. So I'm gonna just start to build a shoulder base. I'm gonna stick that there. And then the next step in building the shoulder to put the rubber legs in front of it is, this is like basically craft fur. 
It's just electric blue. You could use Arctic Fox. You could use even yarn if you wanted to, like egg yarn, you could get blue. Just something, you know, with the fine webbing, the fibers, that will just give it a little bit more movement into the fly. And I'm just gonna take a little chunk, maybe about the width of a pencil. And then just kind of take it and just kind of fray it out a little bit. Can you guys see that? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually tie this in reverse. So I'm gonna put it on here. Clip this. And then I'm gonna take it and kind of pull it back with your fingers and just get it frayed out a little bit so it kind of goes around the whole hook. And then we're gonna take these little silly legs and each of you got like a little section. What we're gonna do is just basically cut it in half. We don't need much. And then I'm gonna put this on and just kind of Roll it over the hook and then bring it up to that shoulder that I made. Just like that. And then we're going to put a little collar of black schwappen in front of it just to hold it all back basically. So we're just going to palmer this. We're going to tie it in tip first. Schwappen's a really good feather to use for steelhead flies because it's very webby and you'll get a lot of movement out of it. And it'll even add a little bit of weight. Not as much as like rabbit or marabou, but it will add a little bit of weight when it gets wet. For the body, I just use, this is like a, it's just braid, I use the electric glue or just anything blue. You can do dubbing even if you wanted to, just dub it with like a blue ice dub or. I'm just gonna go with the the craft fur for the wing. And same thing, I'm gonna tie it in reverse. Take this 
and just basically fold it around the hook and then And then the next step for the wing is I put just a little bit of blue flashaboo in. Just to give it a little more shine to it. And same thing, I don't want to go, usually about the shank of the hook, I don't want it to go past that, past my hook here. Or else it's just going to get wrapped in it when you're casting or as it's trying to fish through the water. And you can add as much as you want. Sometimes a lot of flash is really good, especially if the water's really dirty. On the PM though, if the water's really clear or fairly clear to really low, sometimes flash there can actually hurt you. If you have too much, I believe, it will spook fish. So I'll just kind of come back, just like that. And then to add a little more movement, I put in probably one of my favorite feathers to use. And this is a barred wood duck flank, or mallard flank works really good too. It's just a stiffer feather, and it's very webby, and it just gives it a lot of movement. It's in the current. Plus it gives the fly a classic look, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but like I was talking about earlier, trying to represent the goby. The goby has like a big kind of chunky head, just like a sculpin would. So I take just the black ice stub and I take a pretty good chunk of it, probably like the width of like a Sharpie marker. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Just kind of throw it on here, just like that, and pinch it so it goes all the way around. And then just cinch it like this. And you can do a lot of egg heads, like you'll probably see them, you know, nowadays you see guys that have leeches and stuff for swinging and you're like, how did they make their egg head like that? And this is basically how we did it. You just kind of, and then I'll just kind of trim it short. Kind of fluff it out and then I just take this and I pull it all. Black's better. You do orange and chartreuse that's all over the house and all over the clothes and all over the dogs. And then I just fold it back like this. And 
that's how you can make a sculpin head with ice dub basically or an egg head So that's the heckler. A really good effective pattern for me for swinging for steelhead. 